Well, good morning, 10 o'clock. Come on, let's stand to worship Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Come on. Ooh, I was glad what they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on. I'm waiting on you. Come on. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Glad to be in the service. Hallelujah. Come on. Glad to be in the service. One more time. Come on. Didn't have to let me live. Ooh. But I'm glad, 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 glad to be in the service. <laughs> One more time. All right, use your hands. Wave with somebody. Hey, Deacon, the doctor, come on, wave with somebody. Woo! Hallelujah. One more time. Glad to be in the service. Come on, clap your hands. Lord, glad to be in the service. One more time. Didn't have to let me, I want them to sink in. Didn't have to let me live. But I'm glad, so glad, so glad, so glad, so glad. One more time. Let's roll, be woo. Let's worship Jesus this morning, y'all. We're not forgotten. He knows our name. Come on, find you. Let's go, hey.
Ooh, you know, Isaiah 49 says he has my name inscribed on the palm of his hand. He knows your name. Hallelujah. Because he's father to the fatherless. Hallelujah. Ooh, he's strength to the weak. And he knows my name. Ooh. He's light over darkness. I just hear that one more time, Bert. Ooh. He's strength over weakness. Ooh. Joy over sadness. Come on, touch yourself. He knows my name. Father to the fatherless. Friend to the friendless. Hope for the hope. Come on, one more time. Touch us. Come on. And he knows my name. Come on, clap your hands. He knows your name. Let's roll me. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, you yeah. know our name this morning. Come on, Isaiah 49 that is written on the palm of your hand. It's inscribed on the palm of your hand. My whole name. You know the hairs on my head. <laughs> Nothing can get past you. You know my ups, you know my downs. Ooh, that's the kind of God that you are. Ooh, yes, Lord. Let's raise this song together. The song says, hey, you know my name. Hey, you know my name. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh, you know my name. say oh how he walked with me come on church you know it let's raise it come on oh how he walks with me oh how he talks with me every morning oh how come on oh how he talks with me oh how he tells me oh just this morning hey oh how he tells me that I am his own I belong to you come on that I am his own Come on, you know my name. Your turn now. Come on, tell the God. You know my name. You know my name. It's a declaration. Come on, you know my name. You know my name. Ooh, everybody, you know my name, Lord. You know my name. You know my name. With, come on, say it. Oh, how he walks with me. Ooh. Come on, every morning talks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Ooh. Oh, how he tells me I am his own. Oh, how he tells me I am his own. I am his own. Come on, here's our posture this morning. We're going to say, so now I pour out. Everybody, come on. So now I pour out. I pour out my heart to you. Yeah. Here in your presence, Lord. Here in your presence. Come on, say it. Here in your presence. Ooh. Your presence. I am Let's say it again. Come on, we're talking to the Father. So now I pour out my come on. So now I, I so now I pour out, I pour out my heart, my heart to you. Oh Lord, here in your presence, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Here in your presence, here in your presence, your presence. I am. Come on, you know, let's tell them now, you know my name, you know my name, come on. You know my name. Oh, yes, Lord, you know my name. You know my name. Your whole name, your whole name. You know my name now. You know my name. Ain't no need to worry. Oh, how you walk with me, Lord, every morning. Come on, tell him, come on. Oh, how you walk with me. Woo. On the treadmill, come on. Oh, how you talk, come on. Oh, how you talk with me. Come on, when I'm washing the dishes, come on. Oh, how you tell me I am your own. Oh, how you tell me I am your own this morning. Come on, let's take a moment and talk to your 
Father. Father, you know my name. You know my up, you know my down. Come on. You know my good days, you know my bad days. But you know my name. And you'll never leave me. And you'll never forsake me. Hallelujah. You're always with us. Hallelujah. Da -da -da -da. There's no fire that can burn me. Woo. No mountain can turn me. Woo. No giant. Woo. Let's go, y'all. No fire. Come on, let's go. No fire can burn me. time for somebody. I think you need this in your spirit. Hey, he knows your name. He knows your name. Ooh. God knows your name. <laughs> God knows your name. Come on, say, oh, how you walk with me. Say to y'all, oh, oh, how you walk with me. Oh, how you talk with me every morning. Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me I am your own. Oh, how you tell me I am your own, Lord. I am, and I, I am, am your own. One more time. Oh, how you walk. Come on, just the voices me. Oh, how you walk. Oh, how you walk with me. Oh, how you talk with me, Lord. Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me every morning. Oh, how you tell me. I am, I am your own. And I am your own. You just do me a favor. Ooh. Would you just lift your hands high for the first time? Begin to talk to your father. Come on. Say, God, you know my name. Come on, tell him. He knows your name. Ooh. Come on, cast your cares upon him because he cares. Ooh. Come on, raise up the A flat B. Hey. Come on, cast your cares. Come on, church. Cast your cares because he cares. Come on, he knows your name. Come on, church. Hallelujah. 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 He's just Lord. <laughs> Woo! You know my name, Lord. You know my name. I just hear that for somebody this morning. He knows your name. Come now, somebody. Isaiah 49 says that your name is inscribed on the palm of his hand. I don't know who you are, but he knows your name, my brother. Yes, Lord. He knows your name, my sister. He knows what you got to walk through today. Oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> he knows what you have to walk through tomorrow. But he's a God who cannot fail. He's a God who cannot fail. He's a God who cannot fail. We used to sing this song when I was growing up. I said, tell. Well, we come on, 
church. face tomorrow. Tell me yeah. who can stand before us when we call. Come on, y'all. Come on. This name is Jesus. Come on. Jesus. What about Christian prayer? I come down being that I'm kind of going this direction because somebody needs to hear that this morning. And you know, the way the Holy Spirit works is he becomes all things to all men. Yes? So it may not be you, but it's somebody this morning that needs to hear the name Jesus. So would you do me a favor? One more time. Lift your hands high. Come on. We're a spirit-filled church. We know that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. But somebody needs to hear that name this morning. I don't want to play on your emotions. I want to talk to your spirit. Somebody's got a court case tomorrow. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody's got a doctor they got to go visit tomorrow. You're going to need this name. It's not about me this morning. I just want to do what the Holy Spirit. Jesus. 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 There is something. Come on, raise your keyboard, Bert. About your name, some call you master. Yeah, I hear, I feel it now. Savior Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. We call you Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, let all heaven, that's you and I, and earth proclaim that kings and kingdoms shall all pass away, but 
allow me to do this if you have something pressing tomorrow like tomorrow tomorrow I want you to come to the altar I mean it's pressing tomorrow tomorrow I want you to come I know you're in here you got something pressing tomorrow tomorrow thank you I mean tomorrow's the day and I just want to help us church I know some of y'all look I know y'all tired of me singing but here's the thing but the Holy Spirit comes to meet individual needs Amen. and corporate needs. Amen. Amen. And so that's just how much he loves you that he stopped the whole service just for you. I want to show you how God works. It's not about the lights or the camera or the song, but this is for you. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, well, let's pray, church. Thank you for my sister here. I thank you that Jeremiah 1 says before she was formed in her mother's womb, you knew that May 23rd was coming. Hallelujah. But guess what? You're the God of the end and the beginning, so you're already there. So whatever this thing is tomorrow, Father, we call it done in the name of the Lord Jesus. We declare V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. V I C T O R Y V I C T O R Y Come on V I C T O R Y V I C T O R Y V I C T O R Y Come on pray church V I C T O R Y Whatever it is doctor court Whatever it is, you've got the victory. Come on, let me hear you, bird. You've got the, come on, somebody shout victory. Come on, shout it, church. You can be mad at me later. Come on, shout victory. I need to hear you. Come on, shout behind your mouth. Victory. Victory is mine. Hey. Victory is mine. Hey. Victory today is mine. Oh. <laughs> I told Satan, get me behind. Victory today. Victory today. Victory. Come on, I'm sorry. Today. Oh, no, no, no. Victory. Come on. Come on, can we clap for her victory? Come on, church. Can we clap for her victory? Some of y'all looking. Can we clap for her victory? Satan, get thee behind. That's a victory today. Oh, oh. Is mine. Lord have mercy. We're, we're gonna train this. Come on, Elder. Victory amen. today. Amen. Today. amen. Let the church say amen. And by the way, say when you call on Jesus' name, when you're washing the dishes, that hit me. Because sometimes I'm washing the dishes that you just have to say, Jesus. You don't know what's going on in your life. You just got to say, Jesus. Jesus knows what's going on in your heart. And that's what he's saying. And it don't have to be nothing bad. You could have just gotten a promotion. You could have just found the love of your life. And you just say, Jesus. Jesus. That name is so powerful. Oh, my God. You could be in the garden, down getting the weeds, and just say, Jesus. Jesus. Ah, that's a hey. Ah, hey. Just say Jesus. Just say Jesus. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to New Life. I'm Elder Singleton, and you can tell I'm glad to be here. Oh, my God, I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad you're here. Oh my God, there's a lot of y'all. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you and thank you for coming. Also, I would like to thank you on behalf of Bishop and First Lady Glenda. You don't see Bishop? Yeah, give a hand, Lord. Bishop is out in the vineyard doing God's work, but he knows that we're going to take care of this house while he go. We're going to take care of it. Amen. If it's your first time in the sanctuary, first or second time, please raise your hand or you can remain anonymous. If it's your first or second, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to give you a, 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 a bag with a, a yellow card in there. Uh, the usher's going to come around and get you guys if they haven't given it to you already. You can fill out the card. Could you raise your card up? Because I don't have one. There you go. That's the one I'm talking about. Fill that card out. And also, Minister Goodwood, Brother Goody, and Minister Goody, he's right here. We'll take you over to our welcome area at the end of service so we can get to know more about you. But God bless you. Thank you for coming. You could have went anywhere, but thank you for coming here. Um, now let's turn our attention to our 411. You can have a seat. I'm here to give you the 411 of what events are happening here at New Life. Life groups, life groups, life groups. Which one are you in? We are hearing nothing but great feedback from the first two sessions. It is never too late to join a group of men, women, singles, seniors, young adults, caregivers, wives, and more around a topic of your interest to you. It is a great way to get to know others who can help you connect, grow, and go. Go to the QR code or to www.nlicic.org forward slash life groups to pick your group today. New Life Head Start is coming this fall. Registration for enrollment is now open. They are also hiring for the summer. If you or someone you know are interested, please call the number on the screen for more information. New Life Merch is out and live on our website. Check out our online store by going to nlicic.org and select resources. We have t-shirts, sweatshirts, baseball tees, and more. Get yours today. Save the date for our 2022 Party in the Park. Sunday, July 31st, we will take over the entire O'Fallon Community Park with fun, music, games, food, food trucks, prizes all day, entertainment, teen and children's ministry, and more. Don't miss it. Business owners, we have vendor opportunities available for you as well. More to come. Class of 2022 graduates, Education Sunday is right around the corner and we need your graduation info by this Wednesday. Please make sure you have completed the grad info form on the QR code today. New life changers, new college grad life changers returning home or anyone who has not yet had their life changer 101 class. Saturday, June 4th at 8.30 a.m., Bishop will be teaching the next in-person class. Contact the number on the screen to RSVP if you need child care, which is provided along with breakfast and lunch. Young adult leaders, it's time to spark, inspire, and create the vision that God has given you. Join us August 12th through the 14th, where you will hear from leaders in business, the nonprofit sector, and faith community here at New Life virtually and in person. The event will kick off with a worship night on Friday at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. Registration is open now. Business owners, join NLC's business owner ministry and Marcus King for a smart business seminar. By tuning in, you will gain knowledge about Illinois certification and procurement process. Log on to Zoom Thursday, June 2nd at 5.30 p.m. for the full experience. Check out Bishop's newest podcast release on iLeadAcademy.net. Life Changers, remember next week we are not in person. It is Virtual Family Sunday only online. This is the time to connect with your family and receive the word together at home. Are you worshiping with us in the sanctuary or online for the first, second, or third time? Let us know now in one of three ways. Scan the QR code and click connect. Go to the link on the screen, www.nlicic.org forward slash connect or text welcome 689 to 71441. Have you joined us on virtual new life yet? It's easy. 
Simply go to virtualnewlife.org to sign up for an enhanced online worship experience. Parents, Kids Rock will be virtual only in June and July. You can access Kids Rock curriculum weekly on Virtual New Life. Kids Rock will resume the first Sunday in August and continue through the school year the first Sunday and third Sunday. Welcome to New Life Health Minute. May is Melanoma and Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Skin cancer affects every skin shade, including those of African descent. There are three types of skin cancer. Basal cell, squamous cell and melanoma. Melanoma is the most serious type of skin cancer. Everyone should wear sunscreen regardless of their ethnicity. Talk to your doctor if you notice a sore that doesn't heal or new growth. Do not assume that the black spot you've noticed is just a mole. Not all skin cancers look the same. Know the warning signs of melanoma. A, B, C, D, and D. Look for these changes occurring over a few weeks or months. When in doubt, ask your doctor about changes you have noticed. This has been your New Life Health Minute. Now you're all caught up. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. And don't forget to mark your calendars. Amen, church. You know what? It's offering time. It's offering time. Now, let me tell you something. In this church, we don't, we don't preach. Bishop don't preach you give to get. We don't do that. We preach. Bishop preaches that you give your offering for what God has done for you. And only you know. Only you know how he has taken care of you, how he has moved you from one place to another, how he has saved you from something that you ain't told nobody about. So please rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. Because we're going to give our offering. This is what we do tangibly. Because we also do our tithes, I mean our talents and our treasure, just like the worship team up here. They're giving their talent and their time. And also, that's what we would also like too. So if you want to get on this train that's moving called New Life, just volunteer and get on in here with us because we have fun doing this. Okay, you can give any kind of way. You got all kinds of ways. That they, see, I'm, they, I'm too slow. But they got all kinds of ways you can give or you can give the, they say the old-fashioned way, but you can just go and put the envelope in the basket that's coming around. So let's do our offertory declaration. 2022 will be the year I am intensely intentional in my generosity, personal growth, developing relationships, studying the word of God, evangelism, discipleship, serving, leadership, and learning who you say I am. God, throughout your perilous times in which we live, with your help, I am determined to make this year my best year ever. I will raise my intentionality quotient by focusing the lens of my living on putting you first, starting with my giving, my tithes, and offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, will you please serve the people? Let's worship while we give. Hey.
Come on, if you need him, only if you need him. Is there anybody in here that needs the Lord God? I tried it on my own. I tried to do what I could, but when I, when I decided that I needed God, that's when he showed up in my life. Anybody in here can give the Lord a good hand clap of praise if you need God this morning. Yeah, that, that song was for somebody because I don't know about you, but there have been some times where I've needed God. Amen. Couldn't do it on my own. What the old folks say, uh, I, 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 I tried this, I tried that, but can't nobody do me. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Why don't you wave at the next person next to you say, it's good to see you, you look real good. You look real good. And even if they don't look good, tell them anyway. Glory to God. <laughs> For those of you that are watching, we're super excited that you are with us this morning. Y'all give it up for our virtual streamers. Give it up for our virtual streamers. <laughs> Grateful to have you in virtual new life and in cyberspace. Uh, the hashtag for today is the death of maybe. So when you're posting, post the death of maybe. Minister Vivian, I'm getting a little bit of feedback that's turning down a little bit. Uh, Y'all give it up for our new people this morning. We got several new people in the place. Y'all can do a little bit better than that. Give it up for new folks. You can feel free to get comfortable while we're here. Amen. Welcome home to your second home outside of the place that you live. We are super excited to have you all here with us this morning. Get ready and raise up on your feet. Let's get your word in your hand. Get your device or your physical Bible as we go and stand in reverence to the word of God. A couple things I want to mention. Of course, I want to acknowledge and shout out our bishop. Y'all shout out our bishop. He is, of course, in another part of the country doing God's work. He is serving in the vineyard. How many of you know that being a bishop requires work? Amen. Yeah, you don't just get the title without the responsibility and the requirement to serve at a greater capacity. Amen. Everybody say, okay, well, I want to be, I want to be this and I want to be a bishop and I want to be that. Okay, well, all right. Do you want what comes with that? Amen. Also, I want to mention to you this new life. This is very important. I need you to pay attention here. Uh, next Sunday, say next Sunday. Say it like you mean to say next Sunday. Next Sunday, we will be out of the sanctuary, okay? We'll be out of the sanctuary. Uh, church is not canceled, amen. Church is not canceled. Uh, but we will be 100% virtual. We will be 100% virtual. I need you to get that. Um, and so what Bishop is going to do, you all know we have, a, we have a leader that is very innovative in how he wants us to minister to our community. And in this context, he wants us to minister and witness to those who are in our families. Amen. Is that all right? Say amen if you agree. So what he is going to do is he's going to send you several questions that you are going to work through with your families at home on the Memorial Day weekend. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited to be at home on Memorial Day weekend. Amen. We Y'all are the easy crowd because y'all get to come later on in the morning, but 8 o'clock folk got to get up at 630. Amen. Glory be to God. We got two services. Amen. Glory to God. I will enjoy sleeping in and eating waffles. Amen. We give God praise. We give God praise for breakfast next weekend. Glory be to God. But want to encourage you, want you to be in the place virtually next week. 10 o'clock a.m. is when we are going to get the worship experience started. So please be tuned in on that day. At that time, you'll see the graphic behind me. So now if you come to church on Sunday, you can't blame the church, okay? So PG2 told you, okay? So don't be calling up here. Well, I came up at 10 o'clock and y'all wasn't there. Okay. Just know that 10 o'clock next week, we will be virtual. So be checking your email for that information. Amen. Y'all ready for the word? You ready for the word? Celebrate God if you're ready for the word this morning. Got a word on my heart I'm ready to share with you. Grab your Bibles. We're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy. We're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy. Moses is the writer. And uh, we're going to speak some scripture into your hearing, have a little bit of story time, and then we are going to get right into the message. Got about six verses for us, six or seven verses. 
So let us pay attention to what it is that the word has to say concerning your life this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 4, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 3 is where we're going to start. We're going to look at 3 and 9, and then we're going to go to 32 through 37. It's going to be a little different this morning. We're going to take you on a journey, but then we're going to land this plane right into your neighborhood so that you can get a word from heaven. The Bible says this, you saw with your own eyes, verse 3, you saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. Watch this in verse 9. Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget. Say, don't forget. Say it like you mean to say, don't forget. The things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Need you to really get that. If you've got the Bible app, you can hit that button and it'll highlight it for you. I need you to highlight that. If you're old school, you can get you a pen and put that in the physical book. Amen. Verse 32 skip down to verse 32 ask now about the former days long before your time from the day God created human beings on the earth ask from one end of the heavens to the other has anything so great as this ever happened or has anything like it ever been heard of has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have lived as you have and lived has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? Verse 35 through verse 37, hang in there. You were shown these things, say so you were shown these things so that you might know that the lord is god and watch this what's the old preachers say besides him there is no other from heaven he made you hear his voice to discipline you on earth he showed you his great fire and you heard his words from out of the fire now verse 37 this is where we're going to parallel park and we're going to hang out right here when we get to where we need to get to this is where we're going to park so i need you to get it because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them he brought you out of egypt by his presence and his great strength his great strength this morning, I want to speak to you, Life Changers, on the subject really briefly. I'm going to be brief, and I'm going to let you go and have dinner with loved ones. Uh, the death of maybe. The death of maybe. If you're watching, streaming, you want to hashtag the death of maybe. Father in heaven, we pray that you would bless your word. Touch it and may it increase in your people's hearts. May they receive manna from heaven that you have used me to proclaim. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Let us not just be hearers but doers also. In Jesus' name, we pray and declare it done. Thank God and amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I do believe that God wants us to live lives that are rooted with conviction and purpose. I believe he wants us to be unwavering in our faith. The old song says... Uh, without God, I am nothing. Without him, I am rugged. Without him, I would fail. I would be lost and off somewhere else like a ship without a sail. We have to understand that God has not called us to drift with the wind but we are not fully ready to live that life until we have allowed some things in our life to go home and be with the Lord. Got to let some things die. Watch this. The Death with Dignity Act came into law in Portland, Oregon in 1994. And it says that if a person who is terminally ill chooses so, they can go home peacefully and allow their illness to take its course, which would ultimately lead to the inevitable. Y'all know what's going to happen after that. But that is a decision that that person who is dealing with the illness has to make 
for themselves. No one can make it for them. They can get encouragement. They can get wisdom. They can get counsel from other people, but they have to make a decision to let something in their life die. They've got to be able to give the green light and only you can give God the green light to let that thing in your life that's been standing in between you and purpose to go home and be with the Lord. Uh, only God can do it. And watch this. God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But it's us who are fickle. We are back and forth. We, we go with this opinion and that opinion and, and all of these things. So our maybe has to die so it can align with his character of being confident in who we are at all times. God is a little older, so he's set in his ways. Amen. He doesn't change. How many of us set in our ways? You don't have to be honest if you don't want to. Amen. Some of us set in our ways. God is set in his ways. And if we want to be like God, that means that we have to let that maybe on the inside of us go home to be with the Lord, but it is a personal decision. That thing in your spirit that moved in and is charging you rent is your maybe. It's charging you your faith, it's charging you your attitude, it's charging you your confidence, but most importantly, it's costing you your destiny. Maybe is the enemy of assurance. Maybe is the enemy of pursuit. Maybe is the enemy of direct action to receive the blessing. Maybe I will receive the miracle sign and wonder. Maybe I will walk into this next season confidently. The maybe is the barricade that is time for you to confront. The children of Israel thought or they had a maybe in front of them when they were getting ready to cross the Red Sea. They says, well, maybe we ought to go back to where we were before, because at least in Egypt, we had somewhere to sleep and somewhere to stay and lay our head. Maybe we ought to go back to that place of slavery. But watch this. God kills their maybe with kindness, you know how they say he kills it with kindness. God kills the, the, the maybe with the children of Israel with kindness because he walks them across the Red Sea. God killed their maybe with care and by speaking to them. And watch this, you'll always be caught between God's will and yours when you don't realize that his will for you is care and not punishment. So oftentimes we think that where God is leading us, it is to punish us and to put some hard restraint on our life. But really God is leading us to a place of care and kindness. Now I understand it may be hard for you to get to that next place. It may be hard for you to cross over into the next place, but God is going to give you the grace for where you need to be in this next season of your life. Somebody say he's going to give you grace. And sometimes the thing that's blocking you from seeing new levels of God's care and kindness is your last success. Sometimes your last success will blind you from seeing what God is getting ready to do in this new season. Here we are. We are here in after the Exodus, but not yet in Joshua. We are out of Egypt, but not yet in Canaan, the land of promise. We are out of slavery, but still not where God is calling the children of Israel to be. And just in case the children of Israel forgot where God had brought them, he has to prepare them for the promise by reminding them where he brought them from. See, sometimes you, before you can step into the new place, God has to remind you what you dealt with in the old place. Because if you don't yet value where he brought you from, you won't be ready for where he's taking you to. I can tell there's some witnesses that can testify to that. The maybe will block your ability to be able to survive because right before Moses gets ready to part the Red Sea, the, the children of Israel says, uh, well, well, maybe we ought to rethink this, Moses. 
Maybe we ought to rethink the will of God for our lives. Maybe we ought to think twice about this. But how many of you know that sometimes a moment of hesitation can cost you your life? A, 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 a moment of apprehension, a, a moment of waiting, a moment of delay can cost you the next season of your life of abundance. Because the Egyptians were right behind them. So what you need to do is you need to identify your maybe. You need to identify your maybe. Because what if Moses says, maybe I'll go to Pharaoh? What if he says, maybe I'll ask Pharaoh to release uh, the children of Israel? What if he says, maybe I'll raise my staff? What if he says, maybe I'll do what God is calling me to? The, the other side of your maybe is somebody else's blessing and progression in their life. Had Moses stayed stuck in his maybe, we don't know where the children of Israel would have ended up. And it's a struggle, it's a struggle I know to get over your maybe, I know it is. But let me tell you something that's going to help you. This one is for the older generation. Uh, uh, my generation wants to hear how you fought your maybe, not always how you overcame it. My generation wants to hear how you struggled through the divorce, not what you did when you got on top of the mountain. My generation wants to hear how you are dealing with life in the valley, not when you are on the mountain peak. We always want to share our successes. We want to share the good things about what's going on in our lives. But millennials want to hear how you fought through the battle, not how you became to be victorious. Yeah, yeah, they want they want to see they want to see your scars. They they want to see the things that gave you pain, the things that gave you turmoil, the things that gave you stress and anxiety and caused you depression. Because believe it or not, the power of God is such that it is present whether you want it to be or not. So even when you don't want to be kept, God will still keep you. The Israelites didn't want to cross the Red Sea, but God sent a leader next to them to walk them across that way. Uh, uh, and, and what happens so oftentimes is we are looking for someone to help us and we look for God and we can't find his representative. Let me help you with, I'm, I'm going to help you with scripture here. Uh, 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 uh. This is the Old Testament and so Jesus hadn't come yet. Uh, you ever been on the phone you, 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 and you, you're talking to the, to the people and you, you're talking to the, the, rep the, the, the robot? Any witnesses in here talking to the robot? Then you start pushing zero. You start, yeah, I, 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 I just want to speak to somebody. I, I, and, and then you start yelling out, representative. <laughs> Online, yeah. You start yelling out, I need to speak to a representative. Okay, okay, okay. Well, this is before the representative of Jesus came. But how many of you know that even when you can't feel the spirit of the son, God the father's presence is still in your neighborhood. Even when you don't have the representative and the presence of Jesus, the presence of God, the Father, is still near and in sight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even when you don't have the physical representative, the person and the, the, the presence of God is still near you. He's still in your neighborhood. And watch this. Tell somebody, say, he's killing your maybe with care and kindness. I remember when I was a young kid, uh, I used to be young. Used to be young. I just had a 30th birthday, y'all give God praise. It was in January. It was in January. Just turned 30, so, you know, we got a, a little ways to go. I used to be so afraid to ask Bishop for something. So you know how it is when you know one parent is going to say no. Go to the other parent. You know, the other parent, they're going to say yes. They're going to say yes. So you go to the other parent. You go and approach them and say, yeah, can we do this? Yeah, I want to go to McDonald's and, you know, take me out. 
I used to be so afraid to ask Bishop. But when I got to know who he was, when I really got to be in intimate spaces with him, I began to understand his care a whole lot better. So now I know that when I go to my heavenly father, I can go to him for anything that I am in need of because my earthly father killed my maybe with care and kindness. Because after a while, I began to approach him and ask him for various things. And instead of me being afraid of the answer, I was encouraged and confident that a yes was coming. You got to know that he's going to kill your maybe. Maybe God will do it. Maybe he'll, he'll bring me what I need. You got to understand that he's going to kill your maybe uh, uh, with care and kindness. You may have a maybe in your heart concerning what God can do for you, but the reality is, is that his care is going to usher you into a funeral for your maybe. You ought to start wearing black outside now so that you can prepare for the funeral of your maybe. And when people start asking you, well, why are you always wearing black? Well, child, it died. It passed away. They're going to say, well, what is it? We're going to say, uh, maybe died and came up off of me. So excuse me if I'm wearing black while it's 105 degrees outside, but I'm so confident that in this next season, this maybe is getting ready to fall off, or, uh, fall up off, off of me. You ought to testify to somebody and say, I'm wearing black for the rest of this week. My maybe is getting ready to pass away, so I've got to prepare for the funeral. I, I, I've got to prepare for the funeral. I know y'all don't like how I'm doing. I know you don't like how I'm living, but I'm going to wear black to prepare for this funeral because I've dealt with this maybe for far too long. I've dealt with indecision for too long. I, I've dealt with being on the fence for too long. It, it's time for me to make a personal decision to put maybe in the grave. And then I'm going to invite all of my haters to the funeral because they saw me struggle with maybe. They saw me fight with maybe, and they had all kind of stuff to say. But when I dig a grave for maybe and get ready to put him in there, I'm going to put a seat next to me on my right and next to me on my left so that folk can see that my maybe died. Got to understand that maybe, maybe is getting ready to be put in the grave uh, because sometimes what happens is, and you've got to understand this, uh, your confidence isn't wrapped up in what you see, it's wrapped up in what you saw. Yeah, 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 I'm going to give you scripture. Your confidence can't be in what you see, it ought to be in what you saw. See, in Deuteronomy, God is trying to prepare the people for the promise, but in order to prepare them for the promise, he has to tell them and remind them what he did for them back then so that it would increase and enhance their faith for what he's about to do now. I cannot put a new blessing on you until you appreciate the old blessing. So oftentimes we go and pray to God for something new on Monday when he already answered the prayer on Sunday afternoon. But we have forgotten already what he did on Sunday by Monday because we have not taken the time to remember what he did back then. Is there anybody in here that knows that God has done something for you yesterday and this time I'm not going to forget to pray Praise him for what he did yesterday. I'm going to give God glory for him waking me up yesterday. I may not have what I need to have today, but I'm grateful for what he did for me on yesterday. If I don't get another thing in 2022, I'm glad that he blessed me yesterday. I'm glad that he blessed me in 2021. I'm glad that he took care of me in 2020. Because truth be told, I survived some things that I wasn't supposed to survive. If I'm real honest, I shouldn't have made it out of that situation. I, I really shouldn't have made it, but God saw fit. Watch this in verse 3. Verse 3, uh, I'm still in the Bible, y'all. I'm not just coming up with stuff, okay? I'm still in the Bible. 
I try to preach and teach from the Bible. Uh, the, the Bible says, watch what he says. He says in verse 3, let me find the verse here. Maybe y'all can put it up for me. Uh, verse 3, find verse 3 for me. He says, you saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone, say everyone, who followed the Baal of Peor. In other words, I saw the people around me that was dealing with the same stuff that I dealt with, but for some reason, God saw fit for me to survive it. For some reason, God saw fit for me to survive the earthquake when I really did not have a good footing in my purpose. For some reason, God saw fit to give me a fireproof vest when I myself walked into the fire on my own volition. For some reason, God saw fit to give me equipment to build an ark through the flood when I was the cause of the rain in the first place. For some reason, for some reason, God can still give us a place and a time to survive because you survive what other people around you didn't. In the first part of chapter four, God puts the Israelites to the test. Now we coming up to the text here. He walks them down memory lane. And before you're able to cross over, watch this. God has to check your motives. Do you appreciate what I've already done for you? Is what I've already done for you and what God is doing is he is, uh, is he is testing to see if they're ready for the covenant. The covenant is the agreement, say the agreement. And in any covenant, there ought to be a commitment to the agreement. Now watch this. Deuteronomy is a book of the law, which means that God is laying out a legally binding agreement between the children of Israel and himself. But let me tell you this. Uh, 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 the enemy isn't that smart. Say that again. Somebody caught it. The enemy isn't that smart. I'm not going to give him that much credit. You know, oftentimes we say, okay, well, 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 child, the enemy, he done caught me up into this again. He still, he fighting me, child. Enemy just fight me. I keep on losing this battle. But the enemy is not that smart. He only commits blue collar crimes. Y'all know what a blue collar crime is? They're a little more obvious to catch and more quickly noticeable than white collar crimes. Stealing, killing, and destroying. That's why in verse nine he says, only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. The agreement and the covenant is for you to follow what God is saying to you. But if you can allow the enemy to steal the revelation, that God has planted in your mind and into your heart, then you have lost the battle. Because you've got to know this, when God speaks to you, his words are not random. They're tied to his agreement and the promise that he's going to keep for you. But what happens is the enemy distracts you with work and other things on Monday so that you forgot what you received on Sunday. That's why the Bible is clear in telling us that sometimes when God plants a seed of his word on us, by the time it gets to be the seed coming to, to the ground, it's rocky because we forgot it. We, we forgot the word of God. So you've got to understand God had to make sure that they took a second to be reminded of how God's GPS was right the first time. Don't forget. And that came from his word. Watch this quote. Watch this quote. An ounce of reflection is worth a pound of revelation. If God can take your reflection time, if he can take your thought time, then he can tell, then he can steal the revelation that's on your life. You have to remember, uh, I don't know if we have it on the screen, you have to remember what God has done for you. But keep in mind this, I need you to really hear this. This is a little bit too for the, uh, the older generation here, the more seasoned folk, you know I love y'all. Because cause, y'all, 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 y'all take care of us. Y'all take care of us. But I need you to understand this. I need you to understand this. Here's where we're parking. Keep in mind, you may not get what you want in life today. You may not get it tomorrow. 
if you're in the third or the fourth quarter of your life, you may not be able to fully see all of the blessings God will provide for you. But if it doesn't happen in your generation or in your lifetime, it will happen in the next one. Your prayers today will fuel future generations for tomorrow. And you have a design role and purpose in that. In verse 37, he says, and he loved your forefathers and chose their descendants after them. In other words, God loves you so much that he's not just taking care of you. He's taking care of your family line after you. you you've got to understand that when you really love somebody, you love their in-laws too. Some of y'all ain't, you know, some of y'all ain't had the witnesses had any bad in-laws. Glory to God. When God really loves you, he takes care of the whole family. He, he not only takes care of you, but he takes care of your children and your, your children's children and your grandchildren and all of the people behind you. When he really loves you, he's not just thinking about you. He's thinking about generations after you. Uh, watch here. Here's a story. There was a couple in Baltimore who were sitting in their car. They were enjoying conversation with one another. But before they knew it, another car pulled up next to them and started firing shots into their car. The woman, watch this, was pregnant. She was rushed to the hospital and emergency surgery saved the child, but the mother did not make it. You've got to know that even when you go home to be with Jesus, that God will still birth something into the next generation. You've got to know that even when you go home to be with the Lord, that the maybe that was on your life before is a when he will on the next generation. Deuteronomy 437, because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength. If he doesn't bring your prayers to pass while you're on the earth, he will through the next generation. Somebody say, he's got my children. He's got my grandchildren. He's got everyone behind me because God cares for the least of these. So even those who have not been born yet, God has care for them. You ought to give God a good hand clap and shout of praise. If you really believe that what doesn't come to pass for me will come to pass for folk in my family line. Watch this. He's going to turn that maybe into a win, which will turn into a win for your family line. So here's three principles I need to get to you. I need to get them to you real quickly here. Uh, how to let maybe die. These are the principles. I don't know what's going on with the technology. Y'all give me a word up here. Uh, principle number one, you can write this down. Everybody get your phones. We're going to adapt to what's going on with technology. Y'all, y'all give it up for technology. It's all good. Or give it up for God who created technology better yet than that. Glory be to God. Get your notes out. Principle number one. Need you to get principle number one. In your notes, in your phone. In order to let the maybe in your life die, you need to recreate your hearing and allow God to recreate your heart. In order to let the maybe in your life die, you need to recreate your hearing and allow God to recreate your heart. So oftentimes we listen to the opinions of others before we listen to the opinion of God. See, we, we, we have so many conversations right now about uh, uh, what, what they call that, um, uh, uh, what they call that um, uh, fake news. We got some folk in our lives that give us fake news. And it's about time that we shut out the fake news and allow the report of the Lord to stand true in our lives. So in order for the maybe to be shattered in your life, you have to hear the word of God, which is true. On the other side of the death of your maybe is the recreation of his word in your life. You'll start to hear him differently once you walk closer to him. When you really get to know somebody, that's when you start to hear their heart. 
So oftentimes you understand the hand of God without understanding the heart of God. And when you understand the heart of God, then you can be more confident in his will for your life. Principle number two, the absence of God's voice in your life will breed a what if he doesn't instead of a when he does. The absence of God's voice in your life will breed a what if he doesn't instead of a when he does. You, you, you've got to understand that God is preparing the Israelites to cross over into the promise. But if they don't listen to him concerning their transition, they'll miss the revelation of his protection and how he's going to get them there. You have to learn how to drive the car with a parent first before you get to drive on your own. Israel, before God sends you into a new transition with a new leader and a new voice, you need to learn how to get confident in what God is saying to you first while he's in the car with you. Principle number three, the purpose of your pause is to tell you when it's time to let go of dead things. Sometimes if you've been to the gym, y'all been to the gym? Go to the gym. I know we all work out every day. The reason your muscles or the reason it's hard for you to lift certain weights is because they're underdeveloped. So the reason your pause muscle is not stronger than your productivity muscle is because you have not worked out your pause muscle. You have to pause before the Lord so that he might speak to you and tell you what you need to let go. So here's a couple questions I'm going to leave with you. What new things is God saying to me in this season? I know we don't have media, but it's all good. We're going to keep pressing. In what ways can I bridge the gap between my generation and the younger generation? Here's how I want you to apply this word. Bird, if you can give me some. Number one, I need you to find a care partner, whoever it is in your life, in this generation younger generation you can rest upon your feet whoever it is in this generation the younger generation that you need to minister to that you need to help birth need you to find out who that is the, the Lord told me in the back before I came out here to minister he said very clearly he said miracle signs and wonders he said that very clearly to me so I don't know who you are this morning, but there's miracle signs and wonders that are waiting on you to make a decision about what God is calling you to do. Miracle signs and wonders. If anybody believes that, why don't you give God a hand clap of praise if you believe that? I want to just decree over your life, miracle signs and wonders. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray over your people right now, oh God, that there would be miracle signs and wonders, oh God, that there would be an abundance of revelation that would come to them, oh God, as a result of what you've done in the past. Lord, we receive a word from heaven this morning that no devil in hell can take away the revelation that you have given us. No distraction, no enemy, no job, no, no spouse even, no boyfriend, no girlfriend can take away the revelation that you have implanted into our souls. God, we're decreeing and declaring and we're professing over our lives miracles, signs and wonders. Say there are miracles coming into my life. Repeat after me, say, there are miracles coming into my life. There are signs that I'm getting ready to see. There are wonders that God is getting ready to perform in front of me. I will not miss this next move of God. I missed the last one, but I will not miss this next display of his glory. On the other side of your maybe is victory. On the other side of maybe is prosperity. On the other side of maybe is your abundant living in him. If you need a touch from the Lord about your maybe this morning, you ought to just wave your hand in the air. 
wave your hand in the air if you need a touch from the Lord this morning about your may, your maybe say I'm on the fence you say PG2 I'm on the fence I need to make a decision today I need to decree and declare over my life what God is trying to do because watch this the Bible tells us that his promises are yes and amen so everything spoken over your life shall it will it must come to pass it shall it will it must come to pass you ought to agree with the word of god this morning and give god a good shout of praise if you agree with the word if you agree that i'm i'm getting off of the fence Sometimes we say, I'm on the fence. Well, it's time to hop off of the fence and hop on the side. God says he's going to spit out you if you're lukewarm. He said you're gonna, he's going to spit you out of his, of his mouth if you're lukewarm. Do I have any hot people in this place this morning? Anybody that want to be on fire for the Lord, say, I'm making a decision today that I'm going to be on fire for my heavenly father. I'm not going to let anybody distract and destroy the assignment over my life. You ought to give God a good shout of praise if you are agreeing this morning that I'm putting my maybe into the grave. Putting my maybe into the grave. If you are here this morning, let's pray again. If you are here this morning, you need prayer. You say, PG2, that was a great message, but I need someone to stand in agreement with me about the assignment on my life. I need someone to speak life over me. I can't speak outside of myself. If that's you, you can feel free to just raise your hand in the air. One of the elders is going to come to you. If you want to just agree, if there's something, I'm the only one looking, our eyes are closed. If that's you, wave your hand in the air. If you want somebody to agree with you right now concerning the promises over your life, you need someone to speak life into your situation. If that is you, raise your hand in the air. Amen. Life changes. I need you praying. There can be break. There can only be breakthrough with obedience. So you need to be obedient to the word of God this morning. Let us pray. If you are not in need of a breakthrough, your neighbor is. So we need to be praying for our neighbor this morning. We've got some hands raised up this morning. Amen. If that is you. This next group of people, if you want to give your life to the Lord, if you want to surrender your maybe, you want to surrender your all, you want to surrender everything that God has placed inside of you to him, if that is you, feel free to come to this altar this morning. Feel free. Come to this altar. We're decreeing and de declaring life. We're decreeing and declaring abundance this morning. Finally, if you want to be a life changer this morning, you say, PG2, I really received that word. I want to be a life changer. If that's you, raise your hand in the air. You say, I want to be connected to life changers. I want to be connected to this body of believers. I want to be connected to a community that is connected to Christ. If that is you, raise your hand this morning. Life changers, I need you praying for those that are being prayed for. I need you praying for them. We subdue the hand of the enemy. Devil, take your hands off of the child. Take your hands off of the teenager. Take, take your hands off of the infant. Take your hands off of the mother who is considering abortion. Take your hands off of the younger generation. Take your hands off of the illnesses on the older generation. Take your hands off. We curse this, the enemy at his root. In the name of Jesus, every cancerous cell, we call it out in the name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit, we call it out in the name of Jesus. Everything that the enemy has assigned to your life, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. We pray right now that heaven would intervene into your situation and into your life in the name of Jesus. God sent me here to tell you that it's already done. It's already done. Touch somebody, say, it's already done. 
touch somebody say it's already done let's celebrate the word of Jesus this morning it's already done it's already done glory be to God Robert you can come a couple things I want to mention into your hearing before I give it to the elder we may have our young adult prayer this afternoon after worship we may depending on the technology Vivian are we good with technology is it out okay so we will not have our young adult prayer amen y'all know the enemy something is it's so it's so funny because oftentimes when I have a word that I have wanted to really present to people in virtually the enemy will try to step in and cut off the internet but how many of you know that while they were logged on they received the word of God the Bible says that his word will not go out and return unto him void so whatever they received whatever the message was while we were online they received it amen let us pray father we pray oh god that your people have received a word god as the elder comes lord we are prepared to receive your message for us that we would apply your word that we would seek out your face and your heart concerning our maybe expose our maybe to us this week in Jesus name thank God and amen celebrate Jesus this morning let the church say amen let the church say amen for that word thank you for that multi-generational word that we can all chew and feast on Lord but right now Heavenly Father if there's any first or second or third time guest please make Minister Goodwin right here in the front and we will take you over to the West Lobby Get you more info, get more information, Heavenly Father. But right now, Lord, uh, spring life groups have begun. It's not too late to join a life group. Register at nlicic.org slash life groups or scan the QR code on the back of your seats in the sanctuary. 2022 graduates, if you haven't submitted your graduation info for Education Sunday, please do it now. And please do so by Wednesday the 25th. And also, uh, PG2 said that there will be no prayer after service today. But one thing, just like PG2 said, we will not be in the sanctuary next Sunday. We will be online at 10 o'clock. So if you get here and we're not here, the rapture didn't happen, we are online. Okay? All right, let us pray. Heavenly. One thing I did want to mention really quickly. Check, check. One thing, I, one thing I did want to mention really quickly, you all. We do have our registration. Y'all give it up for the conference, the leadership conference that we're having. <laughs> registration, I believe, will be open finally with our uh, with the link that can be sent to you today. I believe we will have our link. So if you are interested in the conference, we would normally have a graphic for you, um, but we're, I want you to stop at the uh, reception table at the front if you are interested in being a part of our leadership event that's happening in August, uh, August the 12th through the 14th so that we can get your information. We're gonna have several business leaders, several faith leaders that are gonna speak over your business and are gonna give you handles for how you can operate your, your business, amen. So we're going to do that. I want to mention that to you. If you're interested, stop by the reception table. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the day. We thank you, Lord, for the word that came forth, Heavenly Father. But right now, Lord, let that word sink into our hearts so we may take it out of these four walls and take it into the world. Be with us right now, Lord. Bless us and keep us until we're together again. In Jesus' name we pray. 